Tonight's DM would be one Nymphet. Say hello, Nymphet. Hello, Nymphet. Mm-hmm. And she will be our DM. Tonight will be a one-shot of me, that's a twire, playing the role of... I forgot my character's name. Vindy Darkblood. Vindy Darkblood. What else can you tell us about your character? While well, you munch on chips that no one's going to want to listen to. Mm -hmm. So really, this is just for me and her and Future. Hello, Future Us. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, he is a corporate assassin slash spy. You basically send him in when you want to get stuff done. Covertly or overtly, depending on the price. That being said, he won't just work for anyone. Can't be a complete douche. Complete asshole. Doesn't kill women and kids. And just in general, tries to make the world a little bit brighter through the most darkest means possible. Yeah. Hmm. I have guacamole on my lips. Yes, you needed to know that future me. And, um, yeah. Tonight's our test run to see if our baby DM has what it takes to finally get her DM, cut her DM chops. See what she comes up with. So, take it away. Dark blood. You are suddenly awakened by a violent crushing sensation as if a hand has burst into your chest and gripped around your heart and is pulling you upwards. You open your mm. mouth to gasp, but no sound escapes. Instead, you inhale dampness and dirt. You begin to convulse your body, which is being crushed beneath a weight of darkness. The more you struggle, the more you feel the earth around you move and shift until it finally gives way. With what strength you can muster, you pull yourself upwards and emerge caked in mud and filth from the sod. 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 It's a word. Okay. <laughs> it means earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes a moment for your eyes to adjust to the light. Your vision is blurred and all you can see is the distant glowing green that appears to pollute a reddened sky. As you take a moment to still yourself, your vision begins to return. And if there were breath in your lungs, it would catch in your throat at the sight before you. A cemetery stretches before you, scattered with tombs and stones. The clacking of bones and rusty armor and the groans from creatures who still have flesh in their throats begin to fill, as the, um, fill the air as the undead have begun to rise from their graves. You have found yourself on its edge um, with an overgrown fence separating you from a forest that marks the boundary of this cemetery. As the dead rise, they begin to move towards the direction of the green light at the opposing end, seemingly unaware of their return to the land of the living. I fucking hate necromancers. <laughs> Why does it have to be fucking necromancers? Mm -hmm. mm. What do I do? Okay, um... <sighs> I dust myself off, I do a quick equipment check to see, do I have everything on me? You have been buried in all of your armor, your sack be um, beside you, you can scrounge around in the ground, you find your daggers, mm -hmm. you've got all your weapons and your armor that you last remember being on your person in the hole with you. Uh, I, you know what? All these undead, this is somebody else's problem. I'm going to make a beeline straight to that green, that source of the green light. To the green light? Yes. Where all of the, everything undead is heading? Yeah. Alright, uh, roll me. <laughs> I'm going to get your thing up. Mm. Alright, roll me to get up out of the grave. Roll me an athletics check. Athletics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know where you are? Huh? Do you, from what I've told you, do you know where you are? Ah, uh, no, I don't. Not off the top of my head. I'm assuming. Hmm. 
I'm assuming that something major is happening in history, maybe? Mm -hmm. And I for somehow am in the middle of it? Mm -hmm. And I'm possibly could potentially do something to fuck up history in your story. And I don't know if I'm okay with that or not. We'll see. I'm gonna stay away from that. But you can. <laughs> oh, she's just straight up telling me. She's like, you know, see. <laughs> athletics check. Okay, so I got plus two athletics. I'm rolling a d20. Mm -hmm. Six, fuck. 16 Ooh. plus two. Okay, 18. Let's go. Okay, you grab the leap here. You put it over your back. You leap with the bestest of agility out of the um, grave. You look back behind you as you do, and because just as you move a skeleton that shared that grave previously, hand has burst under, and it's just missed you. Mm. <laughs> okay. You okay. <laughs> okay, I like it. Because that grave was not meant for you. <laughs> no, it was not. No, it was not. But I will put somebody else in it. Mm. <laughs> At the end of this experience. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so you're beelining towards the green light as you're... Oh, roll me a stealth check. Oh. Which is gonna be insane. Which is gonna be pointless, this but okay, is, know, stealth but it... check. 20. Oh! Oh! Oh, stealth check. I think you said my stealth was plus 9. Plus 9? Yeah, so it's only a 10. Let's go. It's only a 10? Okay, so as you... You know, you've got dirt in your shoes, you're still a little bit, you have blurry eyed vision, you're walking towards the green light. Um, as you're making a way, you don't, your perception's a little bit skewed and mm -hmm. you bump shoulders with something else that's merged out of a grave. Mm -hmm. You turn to your side and you see a skeleton still armored in military gear mm -hmm. and it turns around and notices you, its eyes are glowing, mm -hmm. glowing green mm -hmm. and it snarls. And I'd mm. say roll for initiative, but it's just you and I, so roll for initiative. <laughs> um, mm, okay, roll for initiative. Well, okay, so then I might as well just fucking attack then. Well, well actually, no, no, you, we first. still gotta counter each other, so let's yeah, see. Yeah, whether you go first or I go first. Okay. It's most likely gonna be you. I got a six. Eleven. Um, yeah, All you right. go first. Let me get up my skeleton. You evaded the first one, but I did. Not the second one. All right, what did he do? Oh wait, no. So wait, wait, wait. I got six. What about this plus five here? That's two initiative. Yeah, we just rolled for initiative. Oh yeah. So we got eleven each. We roll. Yeah, we roll. I didn't realize you could add two initiative. Well, my second roll was seventeen. Shit. One. Okay. <laughs> so either way, it still stands. All right. So you All go right. first. Hmm? You go first, my love. Okay. Um. He, this guy has a short sword. So. Did we roll for him hitting me? Oh no, that's just finished. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. didn't roll for him hitting me. No, this is good. Where did, where did my other die go? Doesn't matter. Either. Ooh, seven. Miss. He misses. Yeah. So he goes, rah, 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 and he grabs his sword out, and he goes, <laughs> get him, and he just, so he's so slow. He's a you, fucking zombie, so he just swings, and I just, like, dead, just I just kind of sidestep and watch the blade just pass by me. Well, your eyes. I'm just like, okay, that was a choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and I could, okay, what do I do? Roll to hit. If I, if I want, I can run away, I can hide, I can do all That's that. That's right, you have options. Mm. If I have a roll to do it though. Yeah. Uh, to see if you're successful at hiding or dodging or whatever. Okay, so let's see. What do I roll to run? Because I'm like, I'm sitting here, I'm like, I can stay here and fight you, or I can fight the person who's summoning you. Well, that's a good point, actually. I don't know what you do if you're in the middle of battle and you want to do a move. Do you still have to roll for the success of the move? Exactly. And if it's... I can understand if I'm surrounded and there's no escape, but it's just... Right now, it's just one-on-one, -on -one, right? For now. For now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> roll for initiative. I can now throw as many as I want to. You can. Um... 
It doesn't make sense to fight one. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, I should fight for sake of story, but it doesn't really make sense. So you know what? Let's take it realistic. I'm going to roll to run, and what do you have to roll to run? It's probably... Mm, cool. What about if we just rolled a um, athletics check? And a successful one means you can run? Okay, I like that idea. I like the idea of rolling and... Athletics, something like if you want to evade. Yeah. Run away. I, I can either, what are you doing? I'm going to run away from the one dude. And I'm going to run, I'm going to roll a... Athletics check. To see if I could get away. Did it say? Other well, I'm looking it up now. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure even when people are like, "Go, I'm gonna go and heal so and so. I'm gonna move over there and blah blah blah." That you still. Yeah, you probably still have to. It's probably a roll against something. Oh, like yeah, you, like you roll to leave. I roll to grab. To try to keep me Let's there. Let's do something like that. Yeah. All right. So my strength versus your um, cool. athletics. Yeah. What do you be... want to do? Strength. Well, I haven't grabbed you. You haven't touched me, so it's not strength. I think it will be an athletics versus an athletics, because then it's like, okay, well, because we haven't made have, contact yet. This guy doesn't have athletics, they just have to be either strength or dexterity. Dexterity. It's loaded, but it's just dexterity then. Yeah. It'd That's be the dexterity. Only one. It'd be dexterity. Can you get away before my guy then tries to... Can I? Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> Let's roll against dexterity. What are we rolling? A d20? D20. What's your mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna get five. Yeah, well, there's no way you got. What did you get? <laughs> five. Twelve plus seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's so unfair. After that. Right, where are you running, though? I'm you just. Gonna continue to run into the green, and you're gonna run. There's a fence. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Forward. You got to be descriptive about. Okay, what's around me? Oh, well, I, I did describe you. So there was a your mm -hmm. grave. There's a graveyard. Your grave is at the edge of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Directly behind you is a forest separated by like a, an old fence that's like fence. all overgrown with hedges. Okay. Literally, you're at the edge of it. It's sprawling in front of you. Are zombies and skeletons rising from their graves, slowly making their way towards the opposite end of the cemetery where there's a green light. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then. you are moving so currently towards with the mass. with the mass zombies. Uh, uh, Okay. So uh, just, yeah, think of the perimeter yeah. and the lights there. Okay, if that's the case, then I'm going to run against the zombies. If all the zombies are heading towards the light, then I'm trying to run off to the side, maybe go against the zombies and try to swing around the zombies. And try to see if I could, maybe once I'm out of the cemetery, away from where they're all emerging, maybe then I can see the light because there's a big green light in the sky, so surely I'll be able to see it anywhere. So let me run... Out, run out from the cemetery going away from the zombies. Alright, you want to attempt to go through a gate, or do you want to attempt to scale the fence directly from where you emerged? Let me attempt to scale the fence. What's that? Uh, dexterity? Or strength? Um, or athletics? Acrobatics. Acrobatics. Cool. Climbing down. Seven again. Jesus Christ. 14 plus right, 7. <laughs> the tips doesn't even, you don't even touch the fence. You just dart, you just jump over it and it goes, and you just beautifully grace it. You, fucking, you even do like a somersault as you land, just because you can. And you're like, why not? You land um, on the other end of this fence and you kind of see um, just densely packed forest mm. in front of you. Green trees, shrubbed, everything looks very lush. Mm. Um, in this area. Okay. You can make out to your right, it starts to clear a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and to your left, you can just see the long trailing edge of the cemetery. All um, right. Span before you. I'm going to the left and I'm following the trail of the cemetery. I, I need to know what that green light is, what's going on. All right. Um, as you walk along the side of the cemetery, you can, you can still hear this massive amassing army of undead just mm -hmm. getting louder and louder and louder as more, th more things begin to emerge from their grave um as you're scaling the wall it begins to turn a little bit 
and almost veer towards the green light, but you're still outside the cemetery. And as you approach the green light, you feel this vibrating humming in your chest mm. and your, your movement begins to start to feel a little bit heavy and a little bit cumbersome mm. as you begin to walk. And the closer you get to the green light, the, the more it feels like you're trudging through quicksand. Mm. Even though I'm on dry land. Even though you're on dry land. Mm -hmm. mm. Clearly, I'm not supposed to go this way, but I don't know what the fuck is going on. <sighs> I'm I'm well and truly away from all the zombies that are coming up, all the skeletons coming up. Oh, they're up. just on the other side of the wall. Mm. You're very stealthy as you do all of this. You've okay. proven yourself that even though you don't know how long you've been in the ground for, um, you still got your wits about you. You can clear hedges, you can be stealthy. <laughs> Can I, is there like trees or some sort of like, I'm, I'm still in a forest or a near forest, right? Mm -hmm. Can I scale a tree and try to see if I could get up on higher ground so I get more survey of the land? Mm -hmm. All right. What do you need? Uh, to climb a tree, just give me another acrobatics check. That's a fucking point. Mm -hmm. But sure. <laughs> 16. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, you're at the top of the tree. I know this is roll overkill, but I just don't know what else to do at this point. Mm. Give me a perception check to see how clearly you can see and how far your vision extends. Not very... Wait, perception... 4 plus 1. Ugh, 5. Alright, so there's still some dirt in your eye. <laughs> so I can't see shit. You blink your eye and some dirt from your um, eyebrows just falls into your eye and it just blurs your vision and through, mm. through teary-eyed vision you see this undulating mass it looks like an ocean because your vision is so blurry of like brown and white um all gathered around the base of what you think is like a faraway building mm -hmm. in the cemetery um and because i'm kind of I feel like being kind you kind of see a blob there's like a blob standing kind of moving on top of this this structure but that's mm -hmm. all you kind of see and green light just emanating from it emanating everywhere Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on, but I bet that fucker is in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it is one thing I know. There's no such thing as a good necromancer. I've yet to meet one. <sighs> I don't know how good I'm trying to be today. Hmm. Screw it. I'm going to try to move a little bit closer, as stealthy as possible, just so I can... Hopefully get a better gauge of what's going on and more importantly see if I can get a good shot off of my own bow and arrow mm -hmm. Okay um, You want to get closer stealthily on still on the other side of the wall. Yeah, you climb back down the tree um, Because the closer you move the harder it is for you to physically move. I want you to roll for stealth with disadvantage. Okay Thank you for that one shit uh, they both sucked, well, but seven. Plus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, seven plus nine. <laughs> oh, <I was> <laughs> Alright. That's sixteen. That's so fucking good. There's an uh, there's a really, really unnatural strength in you that even surprises you. You don't understand you don't really understand where it's coming from, but somehow you're able to pull your body forward despite this invisible invisible, invisible gravity yeah. kind of pushing you back and this humming in your chest that feels like it's vibrating against your skin. Mm -hmm. Um Okay. <laughs> um is growing stronger and stronger. Um you move your way around the um the thing the the hedging and the fencing until you come to an open gate and you peer inside the open gate and you can see much more clearly now there is definitely a figure in a in a long dark coat with a, a massive staff the top of it's glowing green he's pointing it up into the air and swirling it around and as he does all these um undead with glowing green eyes kind of as if commanded his service have begun to um form like a yeah form a circle around him on top of this massive structure um you notice that the skeletons of the undead all seem to be outfitted in various stages of the same costuming military garb they seem to have military weapons helmets um boots 
um, they're all in various stages of decay. Mm. The older ones seem to have more dated uniforms. The ones that look freshly dead are you recognize to be current military uniforms. Um, Some of these guys are freshly killed. Okay. Yeah. Um, the 16, what else do you see? You see humans. You see humans calmly standing at the base of the structure with the undead army in front of them. The undead army don't seem to be attacking them or showing any kind of aggression or malice towards them. Can I see the uniforms that the humans are wearing? Sure, the 16 you can. You notice them to be, um, uh, again, military outfits, but those that would usually adorn officers and captains in the military army. Mm. Um, because of your history and you come from this area and you live around this area, you very quickly realize that they are donning the attire of a number of generals and captains from the nearby Fort Kenny. And I'm from here. These are my, these are essentially my countrymen that I'm seeing. Yeah. Okay. Huh. So you immediately know yourself to still be an Agnar. I'm still an Agnar, soldiers of Agnar. With a necromancer summoning in a whole ass fucking army. Huh. Okay, side note. I'm telling you now. Just you, baby. Yeah. You do realize my if this is the scene I think it's gonna be, wouldn't my character know that there's some huge shit going on and there's a fucking monster that's going around and doing like I would know this, right? Very likely. Well you would I don't, the whole region I don't know was on fire. Be privy to, yeah, you would. The sky's red, red with green. Exactly. So you would be. You're in the middle of the great burning. Yeah, exactly. Right. So my character would know that there's a dragon terrorizing the land. So I would. That, that would change my perspective. I wouldn't be like, oh, these guys are doing it. I'd be like, it's a fucking dragon doing this. So I'd be more curious than like, oh, these are instantly are the bad guys. Yeah, I'll give okay. you. I'll give you a little side note. This isn't. This is just starting point. This isn't for you. Okay. You're. you're it's interesting that you focus directly on some, on the green light and what's happening there, not your character in the mm. situation. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But this is contextual information yeah, in okay. a way. At least you know the time period. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I think he's going to guess wh where he is and what's happening. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now back in character. I don't know. I don't know that. I just. <laughs> I'm just. I just know that. Like. Okay. No. So I was my like, God. Oh. As soon as you can see, I'm going to tell you there are humans yeah. calmly standing there. Yeah. So I know my guys are. Okay, so seeing that, I'm like, okay, well, they're my guys, and they're not getting attacked. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. Again, I'm going to try to stealthily approach, because now I'm, I'm not as on edge. I don't trust these undead rotting pieces of flesh, walking pieces of flesh around me, so if I could somehow find a way around them... To try to get closer, to just get an explanation of what the fuck is going on, and maybe they'll know why the hell I was in a shallow grave a couple minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm gonna make my way towards the humans mm -hmm. as stealthily as possible, as to not get into it with any of these undead creatures. I need to roll for that. Uh, nothing, because we're gonna do story. As mm -hmm. you go to move to continue to creep up to the humans, you hear footsteps approaching that don't mm -hmm. sound like the slow, cumbersome steps of the undead, and you quickly realize that two soldiers are exiting. Mm -hmm. Calmly walking out, exiting the cemetery. You overhear one of them turn around to the other and say, this is completely fucked you, but do you, but do you reckon it's going to work? Mm -hmm. And the other one turns back to his mate and goes, I don't know, but it sounds like this guy's our last hope at, mm -hmm. at, um, at ending this great burning. You would have got there eventually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And as you're about to cross the, the threshold of the gate to get to the other side, or you didn't say whether you're going inside, doesn't matter. They're they're walking out mm -hmm. of the gate into like the forest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I? I don't hundred percent know because they could be officers, and they may, and I know what I do for a living. <laughs> Can I follow one? Of, oh, matter of fact, no, I'm not going to take that chance. Um. I would like to... If you need an explanation of what each of those spells do, I did write a little one here. Thank you, Kitty. Okay. <laughs> um, can I... 
I don't know. Okay, can I use a minor illusion mm. to just change how just subtle features about how I look, so I look more human and not like an like an elf? Yeah, definitely. All right, so let's go. Let's do that. Um, so a minor illusion create an object. Yeah, so I look like stuff in Guardian. Yeah, put myself in a Guardian. <laughs> Um, you so you yeah. have to look up Minor Illusion because I don't know how you cast it. Oh, it's a cantrip? You yeah. Just, you can just can't cast you can just it. just use it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, okay. Cool, you're in. You look like them. Okay. So, overhearing them, I walk up to them and I say, Yeah, there was some night elf out there. I noticed that he was still kind of. Some night elf body halfway buried out there, but didn't ri- didn't rise like the other ones. What's up with him? He didn't rise like the other ones. No. What do you mean? Did he come out of a grave? I mean, it was the body was still in the grave. It wasn't moving. I figured he was dead. I don't know what happened. Well, chances are, if he woke up with the rest of things, that he's probably dead. Did he walk towards the green light? He didn't get up at all. He stayed dead. He stayed dead. I mean. I don't understand. I thought once you once you kill something, it stays dead. You do. <laughs> oh, I'm not regret or all, but um, you do realize that you do know what this ceremony is about. Yeah, I mean, wh- where are you stationed? <laughs> Look, I'm fresh out from Fort Kenning. I was just told to report here from Fort Kenning. All right, which which platoon? I, I'm supposed to know this. Look, I was just drafted by a nearby village, man. I don't really know what to tell you. Like, you've heard of Springville, right? Yeah, Springville. Yeah, yeah like... That, that city to the to the north. Yeah, look, I just got conscripted. I figured I'd come here. Next thing you know, I'd be like, okay, cool. Report to this location. I report to this location, and next thing you know, fucking undead zombies are coming up right. out of nowhere. Calm down. This is. This I, I don't see this shit every day. Okay, no, man. I, I know it's shocking. The other guy turns around and goes, "Give him a break." Oh wait, hold on. Roll for deception first. <laughs> let's 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 see if I can give you a break. Okay. Eighteen oh, plus, plus two. Dirty twenty. <laughs> you're in the army, dude. You, <laughs> you're cool. All right. Um, the other guy goes, "Hey, give give him a break. You remember being a new recruit once? It can be overwhelming. Don't worry, buddy." <laughs> Don't worry, we got you, Jonah. Just just hang out with us. You know, you probably got here a bit bit late to the party. This um this uh wizard dude, um this necromancer dude, um I overheard the captain saying that he's here to raise raise the the army of Fort mm. Kenning. Um didn't seem too happy about the idea, but apparently they're running out of options, things things to the west are getting really, really gnarly, man. Mm. <laughs> with that with that dragon so um i guess they figured an army of the undead would be the best thing to rise up against it i don't know i don't know i'm not looking forward to walking alongside these guys that's that's for sure yeah they but think pretty bad yeah one of them tried to swing at me one the way here did you know that but they're not hurting anybody <laughs> well that one did it was like i said it was near a shallow grave with some dark elf in it what's up with that I, so this dark elf, this dark elf swung at you. Well, it was or he, it was already dead in the grave. I guess it figured I was with it, and then it swung at me. But then it kind of shuffled along and went along its way. I'm trying to figure out who that da- dark elf is, and why the hell would the spell that they're doing affect me and make that thing attack me if they if it thinks I'm with it, with him in the ground. Look, I, that's that's so well above my pay grade. I mean, if the thing isn't rising, the thing wasn't dead and rising with the other I'm dead, but you're saying it's dead, then I don't know, it's sort of weird, crazy magic <sighs> going on in at the moment. I really can't give you too much more information. Look, whatever, man. Between me and you, this shit is weird. I'm just going to go to my post. I just kind of just, just need a moment, all right? I'm just going to go this way. All right, I will just... Again, query whether this guy was dead or not that rose up because everything within the perimeter of the cemetery was to rise to the necromancer's call if it were dead. Hey, look, man, if you want to know, he was about, he was over the hill, down the path that way. Go check it out for yourself if you want. 
I gotta go to my post. See you later. (laughs) (laughs) I just walk off. Okay. After that, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. This place is weird. I'm getting the fuck out of here. And I'm trying to leave. Alright, you head... I'm heading back to town. Hopefully where I can get a stiff drink and a soft bed. Okay, so now that you know you're at Fort Kenning, Mm -hmm. does your character have the ability to orientate himself to go... The guys did say that up north was the city that you're from. Yeah. So you start heading up north? Yep. Alright. Um... Okay, as you clear distance from Fort Kenning. Spell your, wears off. Spell wears off. The humming of your chest um, starts to subside until it's almost silent. Mm. Um, you do feel an uncomfortableness in your skin, though, from where the humming was. Mm. Okay. And it's not, so it's not, it's starting to subside, but it's not quite gone. The humming has subsided, but you almost feel like almost a little bit of like a a burn in your skin, mm. and a pressure where the humming seemed to be happening in your chest. Okay, can I use detect magic to find out if a spell or something was placed on me, or what's going on? Hundred percent. Okay, cool. So, if you want to cast a spell and you're not in combat, how do you roll to cast it? I guess you just cast it, and maybe roll. Arcana? I would imagine yeah, the Arcana. Not in combat dandy. Can I use a spell out of combat? If so, what are the rules? Yes, you can use spells. There's no additional rule outside the already established rule target restriction spell components. Hmm, okay. So I need 10 minutes of concentration to do it. Okay. Cool. So, all right. So I'm guessing I'm feeling that in my chest. I'm starting to get worried. I kind of walk off to the side of the road, maybe in the clearing or something like that. I kind of just get down on my knees and meditate a bit to try to center myself and concentrate and try to see if I could use the tech magic to figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to see if you have to... Oh, Arcana check. Sounds right. Yep. Give me an Arcana check. See Plus two. Up. And come on, Google. Where are you? Mm, be nice. Hey! Plus two. Seventeen. Brilliant. Yes, there's definitely magical e- magic emanating from you. There's magic emanating from um, your chest. I'm going to say... You're able to detect two different types of magic mm-hmm. occurring in you simultaneously. There seems to be some kind of magic that's enveloping your entire form. Mm-hmm. And then there's, I'm going to say that's kind of colored green. Mm-hmm. And then there's a red a red kind of um, different magic energy that is like emanating from your chest. Mm-hmm. And I have no idea what the magic is. I just know that there's, there's magic. Have you looked under your armor and cloak to see if there's anything physically on your chest. Well, uh, okay, <laughs> fine. I'm like it's on your skin vibrating. Oh my god. Okay, fine. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, fine. If I'm feeling it on my skin vibrating, yeah. then I don't know. I reach for whatever other things I might have on me. Mm. And I find, I search my person and I find. You find a beautiful, um, like ruby looking amulet mm. that has been draped around your neck. Yeah. Um, clear, it's this clear, beautiful crystal, and then this, um, quite, quite ornate gold chain that it's hanging from. Is around your neck. Okay, so I immediately take it off and feel it in my hands. Do I still feel it on my person, or is it now in You're my hands? You're physically unable to remove this necklace from around your neck. Oh my god. <coughs> <sighs> okay, so I guess this isn't coming off anytime soon. <sighs> now, okay. 
I have no idea. Do I have like any scars or marks on my body where it was? Where it was? Yeah. Um. Yes. Uh, it's like where it's sitting across your skin. It's almost like it started to like indent a little bit into the skin of your chest. Okay. And around it, um, it's kind of it's a little bit, a little bit black. Okay, this thing is fucking cursed. Then I need to get this off of me. Mm. Um, can I do some sort of? Ooh, okay, can I do some sort of investigation check to see if there's any runes or marks on it that I would recognize? Oh, so I, yeah, sure, sure, if you want. Okay. <laughs> Two <laughs> plus four. Do I recognize so anything on it at press, all? You press your chin down into your chest, try and get a, a try and get a good look at it. Oh, <laughs> you my can't God. I can't, I can't see it. Your, your, your chins are getting in the way a little bit. Shouldn't have had that extra pie that you know a couple of weeks ago. It was a good pie. Um, <laughs> and you can't really you see that it's red. It's pretty. It, um, uh, okay. It. Uh, I can't tell. I want to tell you stuff, but I gotta let the dice decide. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's there. <sighs> okay. I don't know what the fuck this is, but I gotta go and head into town. If I don't know what it is. Then maybe somebody else would. <laughs> Fuck it. Let me head into town. Okay, so you're outside. We, Springvale is actually Gillimore. Because we decided Springvale wasn't a cool enough name. Gilmore. For a city. Gillimore. Gillimore. From Gillimore. Gillimore. Exactly. Alright, so you see the entrance to Gillimore that you have seen a thousand times before. Mm. You know the city like the back of your hand. Mm. Um, you see the giant wooden, um, almost fortress-like gates mm. that separate, that, you know, make the smart, the circumference of the city. Um, you basically have a choice given that, I'm not gonna, you, no history check needed, mm. um, from from the character to decide where you want to go. You, you know, um, the marketplaces in the center of town, you know that your estranged wife lives on the opposite side of the city that you intentionally avoid. Um, you know all the taverns, you have all your connections to, um, the local, um, maid shops and, um, yeah, blacksmiths and armourers that you get all your source all your weapons and do the upkeep of your gear from. Mm. So you can choose to go wherever you like upon entering this village. Alright, I'm very familiar with my line of work of the maid shops. Because every now and again, you never know when you come across some funny magic. And a uh, necklace that I can't take off that's leaving singe marks on my flesh. Mm. Yeah, that's some funny magic. So I'm going to head straight to the maid shop, get in contact with the people I know there so they can at least tell me what's going on. Alright, so you walk in the door and you're greeted with the familiar, Oh, damn blood, it's been a while. I haven't seen you lately. Um, there's a there's a really really um, enthusiastic, um, very youthful yet old looking um, wizard mm -hmm. standing behind the counter of the shop behind him. A various potions brewing. You can see this amazing chemistry set. Um, he's got a, a, a nice glass cabinet. Takes a lot of pride in his shop. This guy, this beautiful glass cabinet of all these different trinkets and and everything. But What's he seems. Name. His name is. I would know. <laughs> His name is Ian. Mm. <laughs> Ian the Wizard. Ian the Wizard. Wow. He's he's not quite. You know, he has a reputation for not being the best at casting spells, but he's very knowledgeable, which is why he owns a shop. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, hey, Ian. How, how's it going? Uh, yeah. Listen, man. Uh, I got a little bit of a problem. What's what's new, Dark Blood? You always seem to come to me only when you have a problem. You never stop in for a chat. Okay. How was your day, Ian? It's been quieter than usual, to be honest. I don't, I don't really know what's going on, but you know, I've been. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to make my targets for this month. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's out. really interesting. Um, what happens if I were to tell you that about a mm, couple kilometers that way? Mm -hmm. The, they're forming, well, by them, I mean our illustrious military, is forming an undead army. 
What? Yeah. I just dug myself out of a shallow grave to a sea of undead soldiers. A sea of undead soldiers. Yeah. I'm getting to the good part. Give me a second. <laughs> you can All... see he's kind of just getting really, really excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's bursting to talk. Yeah, yeah. A sea of undead soldiers all being accompanied by actual living soldiers to go help some help them do something all led by some ominous looking dude with a staff and a black robe all green magic-y and shit and but- he just bursts out at it before you can finish like a necromancer oh my god in these parts and he reaches out behind him and he grabs this massive pile of books and he smashes them down the table and dust flies everywhere he's never had <laughs> he's never had an excuse to take out these books before yeah. Oh, that that's Ian. necromancy! Necromancy! Ian. And he's just pulled book after book and he's Ian. opening them up and he's trying to go, okay. Ian! Yes! No, no, I'm, I'm assuming it's a zip. <laughs> How do I get this off of me? And what is it? Alright, I've got to roll for Ian <laughs> for a second. Because Ian's got to do something. Uh, where's my, my mage? Do they have to? It's, it's perception. Does that come under wisdom? Okay, wisdom. Oh, yeah. nine. Yes. So I get to go. Um, not necessarily. And you see, his the excitement on his face just completely. His face just drops, mm. and he suddenly looks his age. Okay. Um, you see him freeze and, and like his body wants to recoil but he's trying to be professional and he stops himself from, from recoiling and he goes may I and reaches out a hand uh your... sure but the fact that you reacted like that has me a little bit concerned instead of touching the amulet on your chest he actually touches your skin Ian buddy hey I like you but not like that okay <laughs> just Keep it professional, buddy. Um, and he puts his hand, he, he rests his hand on your chest for a moment. And then he looks at you and he goes, You said you rose, you awoke in a cemetery. I awoke from a shallow grave. Do you have any recollection of what happened to you before arising uh, in the cemetery? I don't know, not really, I... What was the last thing you remember? And that's why I asked you to remember those three missions. Those three jobs. Uh... He's still got his hand. He's looking very concerned and he's got his hand on your chest. Uh, the last thing I remember was... Freaking... Uh... Give me a second here. There was something about... A business partner, and he was being a fucking douche, so I put him in his place. Something about a guy who got a little too handsy with some chick. I, I, you know, take his hand away because you're talking again. Don't be awkward. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the part of the story. <laughs> um, yeah, I had to had to do some some wet work on that one. Um. And then some, some, some politician douchebag. Uh, maybe so that way you can never tell another lie again. Yeah. Anyway, what's the point? What are you getting at? Um, Dark Lord, we've known each other a long time. You're over two hundred years old. Um, I was there for your hundredth birthday. <laughs> um, so you, you're you're you, over a hundred years old. I'm. 400 years old. Um, yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm just not very good at magic. <laughs> but I'm great with books. Um, Ian, you you're, you're sweating me? a little bit more than usual. Ian, just just, just, just talk to me straight, dude. I, I have to run some tests. Do you trust me? I, I don't really have bloody much of choice now, do I? Alright. He... He goes and he shuffles in his cabinet behind him and he brings out this tiny little vial. And it's got this like 
grey swirling liquid. What the fuck is that? This is... uh, Silver Bane. I need you to ingest this for me. Yeah? What the fuck is Silver Bane? And why do I need to ingest that? Uh, let me see if I can roll a um, persuasion check. It's persuasion. <laughs> Does that be true? Oh, I don't think I can do that actually. It's not the way it works. I'm not a character. You don't want to drink liquid? Um, okay, fine. And then he grabs a knife and without even asking, he grabs your hand and he cuts. And he cuts along. Jesus, man! You could have told me something before you did that! And you notice that you don't bleed red. You bleed black. And he goes, ah. Just like I suspected. Isn't that supposed to be red? Yes. It's not red, Ian. Why is, why is my blood not red, Ian? Last time I checked, my blood is red. Mm-hmm. I've gotten the shit kicked out of me enough times in my life to know that my blood is supposed to be red. Why is it not red, Ian? And then he grabs a little, like, a um, spectacle thing and he puts on the glass and the, like, enlarges his eye real big like he's in the movies. And he just ignores you because he's just, he's constrained and he looks at Ian. this. He looks at the thing. Use your <laughs> words, Ian. Use your <laughs> words. And he looks at it and he can see. Okay. Ian? Yes. I'm two seconds uh-huh. from showing you what I do for a living. If you do not open that mouth of yours to tell me why my blood is not red. Uh, there's no easy way to tell you this, dark blood, but um <laughs> that's ironic actually now. Um <laughs> there's no easy way to tell you this, but um Ian, you won't be doing anything for a living anymore. Ian, if that is a horrible setup to a pun about me not being alive, I'm about to make you very much not alive. I'm sorry. You said you awoke in a graveyard with no memory of how you got there. At the same time that a necromancer was raising things from that graveyard from the dead. Are you saying I'm dead, Ian? I am telling you one of the... You are one of the undead that were raised. Okay. How is it then that my last me- How is it that we know each other, Ian? I remember coming here. You know me. Mm. When was the... When was the last time you... I even got hiccups. Like, dead people don't hiccup. When was the last time? <laughs> you didn't have hiccups. <laughs> when was the last time you remember seeing me? So you, I mean, I usually see you once every every couple of days, and I haven't seen you in about six, seven days. It's not not like you. What was the last thing you remember me talking to you about? Um. You came in a couple of weeks ago um, for a um, to, to restock your poisons, to restock your poisons for your blades. Um, that was last week, about maybe about a week ago. You're talking about um, Wait a minute, some I'm... businessmen, Lex and I'm getting the names, Lex and Lithos, I Wait believe. If I'm on deck, then wh- how am I eating? Do I even need to eat anymore? No, I, I, I think he pulls out some more. He pulls out, starts rifling through his necromancy book, and he's, he's trying to read up on, on the undead and trying to remember parts of knowledge in his brain that he hasn't accessed in quite some time. Can he do it? He's no, he's, he's having trouble remembering. Um, by the way, the chips are stale. Well, the, everything's gonna taste stale to you, Dark Blood. You, you're dead. 
Eh, still not bad though. Okay. Uh, I wonder. So many, we've never had a um a fully sentient, autonomous undead before. Can you? You would. You would. There would be great value if you went back to Naval and they studied you. Can I mean, you wait for at how least? How are you going to process that food? Can you wait for at least a day or two before you turn me into a science experiment? Oh, sorry. Okay. Alright, so, from what I can tell, the necklace on your chest, it has runes around it. From what I can deduce from my very, very limited knowledge, apparently, on this subject matter, is that it's keeping you alive. It is keeping you conscious. It is some... It is imbued with some kind of protective magic. The person that put that on you wanted to protect you. Did you have that on you in your last memories? No. Hmm. I suggest the key to why you are undead and why you're wearing that necklace. The, the answers will be found if you can trace your steps and fill in that the blanks that are missing. I mean, God, your ships are good. Even though I can't take shit. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I'm not even really that surprised now that I've processed it. I mean, I knew I was going to die eventually. I knew I was probably going to get killed eventually, but at least I was expecting to remember it. Did you expect to be buried a few, I don't know, what, miles? 100 miles away from city in a random military graveyard. Maybe not a random military graveyard. I would like to think that, you know, I would have been at least put somewhere decent, respectable. I like to think I do good for the community with my serve with what I do for a living. But whatever. Anyways. Okay. You said a couple. You said I was here a couple days ago, talking about some shit with businessmen, right? I believe so. You're you're restocking up on some supplies. I must have done some sort of job. Must have done a job, and it finally caught up to me, and now I'm here. Hmm. Which means all I gotta do is retrace my steps. Hmm. And at this point, I'm telling you, the DM, mm -hmm. I probably would have some way for people to contact me or get in reach with me. And if that's the case, I would have to have a record of it, right? Somewhere. I assume you have a, a lair or a house mm -hmm. somewhere in the city that you could go to. Okay, so, alright, so, now back in character. One thing's for sure, undead or not, I need to go home. And I need to shower. Do I smell like a dead body in? Yeah, there's a stench. <sighs> don't scrub too hard. <sighs> I don't, I can't tell you if you will continue to decay with that or not. You look pretty stable. You look so quite fresh, actually, for someone who was undead. So Shall all that awkward signs? touching Who's before... Surely there will be signs of decay by now. All that awkward touching before was for what exactly then? You couldn't tell me if my skin felt like it was decaying with all that touching from before? I was checking to see if your heart was beating. I felt nothing. Did my skin feel cold? Can you not feel your skin being cold? I can't. You can't <laughs> feel anything. And then you just... Did you feel pain before? No. I didn't even realize it until you just grabbed my hand and did it. Wait, when you when you when you figure out what happened to you and and you um come back come back again, give sure. it a couple it's... days before the science experiments, please. We've, we've never had a sentient undead like you before. Oh my god, my name! I have a name. Sorry, yeah. Duckblood. Sorry, Duckblood. Jesus. Sorry, Duckblood. Anyways, uh, thank you. I've gotten what I need to get. Um, I appreciate you again. About three kilometers that way, undead army. Knock yourself out. I will say, whatever you do, do not take that. Anyway. To Lady in, I already tried several times. It's not coming off. Okay. Do not let 
whoever put that on you take take it off. Have a good day, Ian. And don't let anybody know you're dead. He shouts as you the the chimes chink 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 chinks as you walk out the front door, back into the city streets. Yeah. <laughs> good lord. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and... Okay. So, what do you want to do? Oh, you okay. do. Where are you going? I head home. I head to my lair. You have a lair. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's like a secret spy. Lair. Assassin's lair. No. And keep business and personal completely separate. And I just head to my house, where I live, like a normal person. Alright, you've got this modest house, you know, in an un- really unassuming part of the city. Very middle class neighborhood, no one would bat an eye, you know, the people here. Um, it's diverse, there's lots of different types of creatures here. You don't stick out, even though you're a dark elf and you're wearing hooded, people wear hooded stuff around the city all the time. It's quite a, it's got a lot of, um, a reputation for having some various activities going on, which is why it's perfect. It's a big political town. Um, lots of different guilds and such going on, so shady looking characters are a dime a dozen around here, so you fit in good. You get to your home, nobody bothers you, you walk in, everything looks done. Start taking off the clothes. Drop. There's no showers. Um, <laughs> okay. I fill up a tub with water that I've collected. I cast burning hands on it <laughs> to warm it. That's smart. Yes, go. And, hmm. and burning hands is a spell now. So now you've used two spells so you want to take a long rest in your apartment over the night mm-hmm. while you yeah okay so you can regenerate those spells now mm-hmm. black sleep long rest I wake up the next day oh wait all through the night you hear rumbling mm-hmm. every now and then rumbling the sky will sh- the skies all the green that was in the sky that you can see from a mile off as you were walking here is now relatively faded and the sky's back to red. Okay. And every now and then with the rumble, the the um, sky just pulsates a brighter red for a moment and you hear a rumble or um, you catch a waft of burning as is normal now. Fucking thing. I don't know what the fuck they're doing over there, but whatever they're doing, I guess I should thank them. They're the only reason why I'm unalive right now. <laughs> <laughs> Either one. It's next day, right? You try to sleep, you can't. Shit. There's no need for you to sleep. Did you? Yeah. So I have to long rest of just basically tossing and turning and not sleeping. I just get up and I start heading to like the local inn and pub or bar. That's normally when I first start getting information about jobs that I have or haven't taken. So before sunrise you're heading to a tavern? Mm-hmm. Alright. It's just doesn't matter what tavern it is, just heading to the main local- tavern. The main tavern where I normally work it's out. The big, the big tavern in your area. Mm-hmm. Um it's a. It's like five in the morning. Mm-hmm. It's pretty empty except for like the drunkest of drunks that are still there. Um, the band's packed up and gone. Everything's dimly lit. The sun's slowly just coming up out of the horizon. Um, the bartender's there, um, basically prepping the day crew for mm-hmm. the handover mm-hmm. as you walk in. All right, so we we'll walk up to the bartender. And I'm like, hey man, what's going on? You remember me? Uh, Darkblood, Darkblood, yes, I remember you. How's it hey going? man, how's hey. it going? Good, good. Don't usually see you here at this time of the night. 
funny you say that. Hmm. I'm having a little bit of a hard time. I was wondering if you could help me out. Sure, man. It's been a might be a bit slow. It's been a it's been a long night. Yeah. Long night. Uh, has any? Might have been a couple days ago at this point, but uh. You mean a literal couple? <laughs> Literally a few days now at this mm. point. Mm -hmm. But uh, remember the last time I came in here? Yeah. Yeah, maybe about a week or so ago. A little over that, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Do you remember who? Do you remember those guys or whoever really that I, I left with? Are you leaving with any guys? I think you've just been celebrating finishing a job and you're about to take a new one. Mm hmm. I think. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think you were just here with a bunch of. I don't know, they kind of all looked a bit like you. <laughs> you're a bit shady, char to... shady characters, a dime a dozen around here, but, but your lot just. Yeah. You know when people try a little too hard to be not noticed? Uh-huh. I'll try my best not to be offended at that statement. And I'll just be like, hey, just... Do you remember anything odd about them? Anything particular about them? Surely they would have been some out-of-towners or something. Did they, did they have a room? Did they... Oh, I don't know, man. It was a week ago. Oh, 11 plus. Let's see what a commoner has from... Intelligence. No pluses in eleven. Um, I don't. I do. Can't really recall, man. I think um, you were celebrating with a group of friends. I was overhearing something about a new job. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I might have heard the name. Lex, but beyond that, I can't really. I, I, don't, I don't know. But we get so many people here. Mm -hmm. We get so many people here passing through. Mm -hmm. Unless you had a specific conversation with me, I really try not to pry on my patrons. Yes. Do you remember if they had a room here or no? No, I think he was a local. Local. A local. Local name Lex. Hmm. Okay then. Appreciate that, man. I mean, I'm just gonna be over here at my usual table. All right, just send over. Just send the waitress or the barmaid over with a ale or something like that, alright, man? Yeah, no worries. Yeah, cool. So Susie! I... Ale! <laughs> and some roast duck. Uh, kitchen's closed, but for you, no problem. <laughs> he goes back. Appreciate it. And the roast duck! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he goes back to polishing the last of his glasses. Mm hmm. So, I grant I'm having an ale and duck at five in the morning, but screw it, I'm hungry. Mm, and I'm nice. not like I could taste it anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so funny. So, it's like, screw it. <laughs> so I go take a seat, and I wait for Susie to show up. See, so Susie is a, a kind of, um, she's a veteran waitress. She's probably mm. in her, about in her 60s, and she, oh, Jesus. she loves what she does. And she's like, oh, hello! Dear, nice to see you. She puts the ale down. She puts the. Is there anything else I can get you? We have some lovely condiments mm. for that duck. Although it stands up on its own, you won't need them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? I think I'll have some tomato sauce. Tomato sauce coming right up, dear. Yes. Well, wait, hold on, Susie. Susie, I just yes. got a question. Do you remember the last time I was here? Oh, it's been a little while, but I would say no more than a week and a half ago, maybe. Yeah, I was with um some some people, some friends. Do you? Do you remember anything about them? Uh, it was a little, the, the night's a little easy for me. I'm trying to remember. I try not to pay attention to what the customers are of saying. Course, but what of I course. did notice was there was you were you did seem to be with some close acquaintances of yours. But then then a gentleman a gentleman came and tapped you on the shoulder. He looked, he was, looked quite stern or business. Mm. And I uh, I think you I think I think you went into that private. 
Booth over there, and you seem to have you seem to have some words in him. And if I if I do recall correctly, oh, my memory not so great these days. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there was an exchange of coin. Mmm, exchange of coin. You wouldn't the name Lex wouldn't ring any bells to you, would it? Oh no, sorry, dear. Mm, okay, okay, okay. You know, I think I will have that duck with a little bit of um applesauce. Applesauce? Oh, coming applesauce. right up. Do you know ketchup? Yes, I've heard of ketchup. It's what those people from the other lands call it. But you know, to we us civilized people tomato we have sauce. To make them So you'd like some tomato sauce and some applesauce with your duck? Yes, please. Coming right up. She looks a little puzzled, but she totters off and she and then she comes back and she's there you go, dear, and she pinches mm. your cheek. And then Kind of looks at you a little strange for a minute in her fingers and then just i just came out of a bath oh. you know oh yeah oh, still well, a little cold you. yeah oh. you know it, it it wakes you up in the morning you oh, know how it is okay. yeah oh. long night long night oh, well, a refresher this ale's sure to warm you up yes. she toddles off back to the kitchen yes 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 <laughs> Cool. So I'm digging into my duck, I'm enjoying it, but I'm half eating it, and then I like, kind of like get up and I look, I go to the booth and I take a look around, see if maybe he left anything. Great, right, it's been days, but see what's there. Uh, can I just do maybe investigation or perception? Oh, no investigation. Investigation. <clears throat> and find. Oh shit, he rolls a lot. It's not gonna be easy. Eleven. Oh god. Um, Let's see. You don't see anything noticeable. It's It's been cleaned, it's been polished down. Um, it's been cleared for, it's already, you know, the night staff have already come in and cleaned it while the pa other patrons were kind of clearing on out. Um, instead, you get a really murky vision let's say of you do remember being in this booth and you do remember um talking to what you believe to be your next job in this booth okay well if i took the job there has to be some information to go with it all right cool so i come out i finish my meal and then i head to where i do business the lair Surely, if I had to do a job, I would have had to do reconnaissance. I would have had to gather information. Hopefully, information would lead to the job, and then the job would lead to whoever it was that killed me. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm heading next. Okay. Again, you make your way through the streets, completely unseen. Um, even though you're dead, you're very stealthy. Every now and then, just a <laughs> as as you walk past, as you notice people starting to notice that. You have a little bit of an off smell to you. Should you linger somewhere for a bit too long? But other than that, nobody nobody notices you. She has to find a way to offset the stealth somehow. <laughs> like, what's that smell? <laughs> Jesus. Um, you get to your uh, lair. Okay. Um, and again, looks exactly how you left it. Cool. Completely untouched. But I would have to have some records of some jobs I've accepted. You do, you do. You have a ledger, and in mm -hmm. that ledger you put down um, the details of uh, who ordered the job, um, for how much gold, um, details about installations of payment, whether they're paying you up front after job, all the details of the job and who the hit was for or what the job entailed. So I go and I ruffle through and find whatever my latest job is and what information do I have? Okay, so your last job is the job that you do have memory of. It is of the businessman, Lex, um, who requested for you to um, assassinate his business partner. And upon investigation of doing that job, you did discover that um, his business partner um, was in fact above board with all his actions. And then instead it was Lex who was, was the, a douche. Was the, the baddie in that situation. And you threatened his life and told him to leave the city. And the last memory that you have of Lex is you threatening him and saying, you leave whatever name the city's called. You must leave Gilamore. Um, forfeit your side of the business and never return. Okay. Otherwise you fuck you up. Cool. You do also have the name of business partner who is Lethos, 
and you do have both Lex's and Lethoth's address. Mm -hmm. And that job was ultimately, apart from the upfront payment to secure your services, was unpaid. Just mm. threatened to get him out of town. <laughs> okay, so first and foremost, let me go check on the dude that's above board. We'll go check on the legit business part. The guy who was originally sent to kill, but didn't. I'm gonna head to his address and see if I can find him and what's going on with him. Alright. You travel to his location. Um, funnily enough, he lives in the same area of the city that you lived in. You've been to this place before because you did confront him. You staked mm -hmm. it out, um, and then you did end up confronting him as you were about to question him and... He did that in his place of residence. Um, yeah, how do you go about? Do you knock on the door? Do you walk in? Do you scout? What do you do? I scout first. Alright, scout, roll a perception check. <laughs> okay, uh, perception. Great, a whopping three. You have no idea if anyone's home. Fucking hell. <laughs> Hmm, let's see. Trying to look through the windows, all the blinds are drawn. It's quite early in the morning by this stage, though. It's probably about 8 o'clock in the morning. Family, if they are home, you could assume they're still there. Is there a back? There would have to be a back door or some something or something like that? No, I'd say he's in more of a townhouse. It's really just the entrance and then a few windows to the side, but the back just has a, another building that just joins onto the back. Okay, let me use my lock picking set. Set. We'll pick the locks, break in, and try to be as stealthy as possible. Okay, well give me a sleight of hand. Give me a sleight of hand? Yeah. Yeah, sleight of hand. Or dexterity? Two. Sleight of hand. Uh, sleight of hand, nine. <laughs> Jesus. Nine plus nine. Eighteen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this door just slowly... Opens, takes you no time, you basically put your pins in, just Ooh. pop the lock. Opens in, you've got free room to walk through the house. Mm -hmm. You've been in the bottom level of the house, it's two levels. You've been in the bottom level before. The bottom level is like a lounge area and a dining area with the kitchen, and then mm -hmm. there's a staircase that leads upstairs. Hmm. It's eight o'clock. People are probably awake. Uh, I want to use my stealth to kind of like. Maneuver through the house and see if I could find him and talk to him by himself. Or just, just to scout the house and see where everybody is and try to be as sneaky as possible. Do you want to roll for it? After just give it to you. Sure. Just give it to you. Um, you hear clanker and cluttering in the kitchen. Someone's in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, you hear um, the sound of somebody eating at a table. Clanking, maybe like a sloshing sound, maybe someone's having some kind of liquid, liquid Gorge. meal. Um, and you do hear a chair kind of getting pulled into what you assume might be close to a desk or something mm -hmm. above you. Mm -hmm. There are three people in the house. I can't see. I can't see who's eating downstairs. Yeah, okay, sure. You slip around the corner and you peer all stealthily, and you see the wife is there preparing breakfast for a child. Okay, and that would mean he's probably upstairs. So I head upstairs. And I head upstairs, and I'm assuming he's in an office. Um, Doors ajar, you can see right at the office okay, he's sitting. So, paper's got all his paperwork in front of him. So I stealth my way in, and I just kind of like appear behind him, and I just say his name. Was it Liam? Lethos. Lethos. Lethos, we have a problem. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god, dark blood. <laughs> Oh my god, you're not here to kill me, are you? If I was here to kill you, you'd be dead already. <laughs> you said that last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god. I um, need to know some information about your business partner. Uh, yeah, Lex. Yep. Yes, you, yes. You told me you were off to take care of business last time we talked. Alright, uh, about that. I need to know some information. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea of his business holdings or property holdings that he might have outside the town? Or even within the town? 
I have, I have no idea. I haven't seen him since I saw you. Since before I saw you last, I, I don't know. Um, a, a few mutual business partners and and um, people that we know. Um, he's lost like he's dropped off the face of the planet. Mm -hmm, cool. I'm gonna need a list of those people as well as where I could possibly find them. Um. Okay. Uh, he scrolls down a couple of names on a piece of paper and hands and shaking hands, hands it to you. He's very uncomfortable with you. Mm -hmm. You've never expected to see you again. Cool. Now, also, if he were to say, contact you for any reason at all, I mean, outside of trying to kill you, of course. Uh, <laughs> do me a favor and just let me know. Uh, how, how, how can I get hold of you? Oh yeah, good point. I'll be back and check in on you from time to time, okay? Uh, can, you, can you use the front door next time? My, my wife and kids are downstairs. Do, do I have to be worried? Uh, yeah, your wife is downstairs. You know, you should really cook for that woman. She's not a very good cook. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, see you later, man. <laughs> disappear. And you disappear. There you go. Sure. So now I have a list of friends and people who could potentially help him as well as where to find them. So once I'm looking at that list, who am I seeing? You are seeing the name of Lex's wife. You have the couple of friends that are in the same social circle that you could hit up. Um, and then you have the name of a... Mutual, a couple of guys in like a couple of fi like a, a finance guy that they were trying to finance the business through. You have the name of I don't know what the business was for, but a supplier. Cool. Uh, I suppose first and foremost, the least likely a place where I find him, I have his address, right? So let me go to his address first. Mm -hmm. Well, second. Second. I went to his address first. Oh, okay. You're, so going, going, to, you're going to Lex's address? Yeah, I'm not expecting him to be there because he'd be a dumbass if he was there, but cool. Alright, you make your way to Lex's house. You mm -hmm. approach. He's in, um, comes from a bit more wealth than his business partner. Um, he has a standalone house. Mm -hmm. Very fancy, multiple points of entrance. Um, you do notice that the front door is a jail. Okay. Stealth. Mm -hmm. Stealth, 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 stealth. I sneak in, very perceptive, trying to see, trying to take in any and all the information I possibly can. Um, I sneak in through that, that, a stealth jar, check. that a jar door. <laughs> Just I don't even know why, but sure. No, you got a one on that lot, on one time, remember? Ten, Nine to, yeah. plus nine. <laughs> You're quiet as a mouse as you walk through the house. <laughs> Aw, rhyming kitty. <laughs> Good. All right. So, um, and if you want to do an investigation, investigation, fifteen plus four. Oh, nineteen! Amazing. Um, it's actually not that hard though to see that the house has um been a little bit ransacked. Okay. The um, the amount of dust that's settled on the ground, you can tell there. Hasn't been movement in the house for a few days, so a few days have passed since the house was disturbed. Um, there were there are signs of a struggle. Bookcases are toppled over, tables are broken. Um, the items in the kitchen seem like they would try, people tried to use them as weapons. They're in unnatural places scattered about the room. Um, you see some scuff marks on the floor where you think an altercation might have taken place. Um, as you, it's a single level story as you move further and through, through, through the house to where his study is at the back. Um, the study door slightly ajar, and as you peer inside, you see a trail of blood across the floor leading to a bookcase. Okay. So, follow that trail of blood, and I investigate the bookcase, see if it could be moved any, anyway again. Using the same investigation skills, you can tell that it is a special bookcase and that there is a way to prevent. I <laughs> I look around try to see if there's some sort of secret door 
Or, well, first I'm going to say, I'm going to look around and see if there's some sort of latch or secret door that I have to... A lever or something. Mm-hmm. Let me roll investigation, see if I can find it. Mm-hmm. Fifteen again. Okay. That's four. Nineteen. Mm-hmm. You look carefully at all the books on the bookcase, and you see in one of them there seems to be a key slot of sorts. Okay. So something, some mechanical mechanism inside it can be manipulated to somehow move this bookcase. Lock picking skills. Because you have. Because you have, um, what is it called? A proficiency in that you know it to be a screw lock. It requires a long tool to go into the finger width channel. And you need to physically unscrew the lock should you do it. You do know this is a very tricky lock because it is of a bizarre shape. Lock picking, kitty. Mm-hmm. Slide that sleight of hand or dexterity. Which one you want, kitty? Mm-hmm. You can choose. You slide a hand. It's plus nine. Shit. And, yeah. So, here we go. Fuck. Seven. Plus nine. Plus nine. It starts to click. It's hard to hard lock. Wow. It starts to click. <laughs> but you just don't, you can't quite, can't quite open it. Mm. But this amazing resource, it's a lock slash trap generator mm-hmm. and you just kind of generate a lock or trap and it sets one out for you okay. so you don't have to pre-plan locks mm. okay so mm. okay well that didn't work mm. i need the key then for that okay can i look at me can i look around the room and see if i see anything any um, semblance of a key for look around the room? Because surely he might have had a spare hidden away somewhere in the house. Using your investigation check, you notice no key in this room. Um, you... Do notice, though, that nothing appears to be stolen. Nothing appears to be shuffled around in this space. This space has nothing has been disturbed except for the trail of blood from behind the desk mm. to the, um, to behind the book. <sighs> okay. So whatever, whoever is bleeding out or dead behind that bookcase, I can't get to behind that bookcase because I need a key and there's nothing in this room. I could try to find search, I'm searching your room, mind you, mm-hmm. and not finding anything. <sighs> it definitely needs a key and the only way to get inside is to either break or pick the lock. And I tried to pick the lock already. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Let me see. Yeah. Screw it. Can I use burning hands to try to pour to burn my way through? Yes, you can. All right, let's do that then. Uh, okay. Roll. Well, I'm just gonna get you to roll for damage to see if you can destroy the lock. So it's four d sixes. Did you say at level? Yeah, it's four d sixes at level three. Four d sixes. How much damage can you do to this lock? Twenty two. Oh, you break it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's okay. That's an insanely high roll. <laughs> you needed to get 18 to break a, a metal lock, and you got 22. I was like, shit. I was actually thinking, contingency, contingency, what can you do? And I was like, oh. okay, cool. Yeah, it melts away. And as it melts away, whatever mechanisms held it in place just melts away with it, and the, the door starts to slide sideways. And behind it, you see the corpse, not of Lithos, but his wife. No, not the wife. <laughs> not the wifey. Not wifey sauce. Not the wifey sauce. Mm-hmm. She, um, it's quite a, it's quite a large chamber in there. You can tell that, um, well, from your investigation, you knew Lex wasn't a particularly reputable, nice guy. There are, there are ledgers. There are a few, um, items. You don't know what significant value, um, 
his wife is laying dead on the floor. Um, her throat has been slit. Mm. Um, and then you see footprints all around. And then there's like a, seems to be some kind of like um door that leads out okay. into the like back alleyway. Is there anything of value in that room that I may need? I can give you some loot. <laughs> some loot? Form blazing sword! No. No. Um, you can have... You can have something. What can I have? Do I have a loot? D&D loot generator. <laughs> Random treasure generator. Thank you. You get a potion of aid. I think. <laughs> A potion of aid. You camp in 30 feet. Choose up to three creatures within range <laughs> um, to bolster their toughness and resolve. Including myself. I assume you could be one of the three. Each target's hit point maximum and current hit points increase by five Ooh. for up to eight hours. Ooh, good. Write that down somewhere, darling. That's important. Recording again. Okay. You want to listen back? Hmm? Okay, well, are we going to sp- split this over two sessions, I guess? Yeah, I'm about to call in a minute now. We've been going for 50 minutes. Okay. On top of the 40. But, okay. That's good two two hour sessions. Yeah. Do it. Okay, cool. Send it there then, I guess. Okay, you get your potion of aid. And then. Dead wife. Dead wife. And now I know someone killed his wife. I hope it's not him, but it could be. And I have to go now and investigate that list of other business partners. Good thing I didn't go to his wife first. You did go to his wife first. No, I didn't. I went to the business partner, and then I went to his house. Hmm? I went to the business partner, mm-hmm. and then I went to his house from what I got from the business partner. Oh, the cost. Like you went to Lex's house. Lex's house. Yeah, okay. Well, his. I'm like, who's his? Yeah, I went okay. to Lex. Yeah, the business partner, baby. I went to the business. Two part- business partners. There's so there's three of them in total. No, no. There's there's Lex and Lithos. I went to the Target's business partner, <laughs> and then from there went to the guy's house. Yes, he did. Where I find his wife is dead. Yes, his wife yes. is dead. And so are you. I wasn't expecting that. Anyway. That'll be it for now. And when I eventually play this back for my baby, she will get to hear all of this in glorious HD. Boy. Say bye, kitty. Bye, kitty.